Welcome to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. For over 10 years, Dan has been helping AM1160 listeners. With so many companies to choose from and hundreds of loan options, the mortgage process can be confusing and costly. Be sure to listen each day for Dan and learn the difference between FHA, VA, and conventional loans. You'll also learn how to negotiate lower interest rates and fees, as well as steps to buying your first home and whether refinancing makes sense. Stay tuned to find out why Chicago's top realtors are choosing Dan Frio. Welcome to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio and I, of course, am Dan Frio. And like promised, I had Richard come back again today. He is the founder of STR University, Short Term Rentals. And yesterday was so intriguing that I want now for him to, he explained kind of what he does, how he does it, where he came from. He's got a degree from Wharton's business school. If anybody knows anything about that, I mean, it's, he's up the food chain. Um, but what I want to, I have him on today. I'm going to have him, you know, tell us a little bit about himself, how you can follow him. Use this person as a mentor. I'm using him as a mentor. I follow every video he has. I, I'm learning about the Facebooks and the other communities he has. The guy's a genius. So I want to introduce him. Again, it's Richard. He's the founder of Short Term Rentals University. And uh, welcome, Richard. Much, Dan. A pleasure to be back. You betcha. So before we get started, how does, how does somebody, and hopefully everybody listened yesterday, but what's a good way for someone to follow you or find out more about you? Cool. The first thing I would ask is that you go to our website, which is www.str.university and sign up with your email so that way we can stay in contact and let you know about whatever. I do meetups all across the country, all across the world. So there's information that you want to be on our uh, email list. It's free. And then from our website, it'll point you to our YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos, how to get started, how to handle this situation, all the things that you may be asking that are preventing you from getting started is all on our YouTube channel, STR University. And then we have a great Facebook group. It's free. There's 12,500 hosts. And you can come and post anything. There is no such thing as a dumb question. The one thing that we insist on our Facebook group is that everybody is upbeat, optimistic, looking to help people. We're not interested in any of the you know negativity, anonymous stuff. So this is all entrepreneurs looking to grow. Sweet. So my question is, yesterday's show was phenomenal, and you explained to us how to maximize our profits, what to do. Basically, now I have a shovel in hand, and I want to start digging. I want to start building this thing. What are the steps that we need to take? And, and I know you have this on the YouTubes and the Facebooks and everything else, but give us kind of a look behind the curtain. What, what is your suggestion on, uh, you know my story. So what would you say to me? Okay, Dan, here's what we need to do. Here's the first steps of, you know, where, where we need to get you. Like when you, when you had your 15 year plan, what was, yep. what was day one? What would you suggest we do? <clears throat> So what I would encourage listeners to the show to do is spend a little bit of time on the YouTube channel and watch the videos and make sure this resonates and you want to do this. But I didn't have the benefit of that. There was no YouTube channel. So I just had to go in cold as an entrepreneur and say, let me get started. Let me test this. You have a free sneak peek behind the curtain. You can see if this makes sense. You can see if this resonates and then you can do it. So I would encourage you to do a little bit of homework first. Once you do that little bit of homework and you say, gee, there really is a great opportunity here. And, you know, I had come from this mindset that all of my assets, whether they be homes, vacation homes, they have to pay for themselves. The day and age of me going out and me paying for my primary home to live there and then me paying for a vacation home to live there and it being vacant, you know, my primary home, the way that I've done that, and I just filmed a video on this, pays for itself. I live for free. I bought a duplex. I live upstairs. And then underneath me, I Airbnb that. And so that pays my mortgage. So I live for free. Um, and we teach people how to do that. But once you've done the education, you believe this is a compelling opportunity, then I encourage you to take a look at what your assets are. Maybe you're getting started. You just graduated college. You have a lot of debt. You don't own a home. Well, the place that you're living in, you're not there 365 days. You probably take a vacation. You go visit. We used Aunt Sally's wedding as an example in a prior episode. You know, when you are gone, you can monetize your asset when you're not there. 
Have it pay for your trip. Have it pay for that vacation. Have it pay down your school debt. Maybe you've got a spare bedroom. Everyone has more assets than you would think of. And so I want you to open your mind and open your lens and take a look around and say, what can I rent? And some of the most popular Airbnbs are hammocks in the backyard, uh, a tent up on a, uh, you know, you have a great view somewhere and you can't put people in your home. Well, you can pitch a tent. I mean, you can put a yurt, you can have an Airstream, you can have an RV, you can put a boat that sleeps people. This is my point. Once you start to think about what it is that you have, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. I could probably get started on this immediately. I don't have to spend a lot of money. I don't need to go buy something. No disrespect to getting your mortgage, but once we get enough money coming in the door, then we want to go make an investment. Then we need the mortgage. And I encourage people to do that. And what we find time and time again is that once people start to realize how lucrative this is, they want to scale. And they go from the spare assets that they had to that first investment property to then a second, a third, a fifth, a tenth, 50, and I'm now developing 200 units. Whew. You know, I'm a real estate developer and I'm building 200 units. Did you ever think that you'd be a real estate developer 15 years ago? Never in a million years. <laughs> Never in a million years did I yeah. think that I would have one Airbnb that would then four years later turn into this YouTube channel, being on your radio station and owning 20 acres of waterfront property down on Hatteras Island that I'm going to develop into short-term re rentals or boutique hotels or whatever you want to call them. Never in a million years, but that's sort of the opportunity when you decide you want to do something, you educate yourself, you spend the time and energy to learn and be creative and take risks and rise to challenges and go for it. Got it. So let me, let's start narrowing down some things. So in this segment sure. and the next segment, I'm going to just kind of walk Try to just pick your brain and kind of get a little bit of micro data f from you, I guess, is a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, what I want to discuss is, you know, you always hear in real estate, location, location, location. Is there, and, and this is tough, because in your, in your spectrum, you have the whole world. So what makes you, well, let's just say it this way. Why did you go to North Carolina to buy that property? How did you find it? What even, it, what was you know, in your brain that says, I want to go to North Carolina and buy 20 acres. So sure. uh, I guess so, do, do you get the gist of my question. Where, where, I do you, do. where do you even, you have the whole world, world to buy something. Where do you narrow it down to? Okay. So the first thing I want to um, be very clear on, on the radius, everyone listening, you know, avoids a big oopsie. Uh, there is a lot of regulatory risk and pressures and your community will have local laws, and if they don't, they likely will at some point. So the very first thing that you want to do is make sure that it's legally allowed. I don't want you to go set up a business somewhere and then get stopped out or, or you know, penalized. So start there. And then the second thing, and I just filmed a video on this on YouTube, is it's even there could be laws that exist, and if there's not short-term rental lodging or business tax or any of these uh, additional taxes, and just be cautious. Those rules may change over time and they could become more favorable or more onerous. So I also like to look for places where the lodging is then also taxed because then the community sort of needs that income to fix the roads and schools and so on. And so the rules are likely to stick. So I think a big risk in this area right now is the um, it's so disruptive and it's so emerging. We're so early that regulation can be your friend, and that's the way I look at it. And so from my investment perspective, I want to go to friendly regulatory areas where it's already zoned and taxed. If it's not zoned and taxed, you can still proceed. Just proceed with caution. So the first thing I look at is the regulatory framework. And then I look at, you know, from my perspective, opportunity. What's the competition look like? And that competition is other Airbnbs and also hotels and bed and breakfasts and motels. When I went down to North Carolina, I had nothing on my mind about a real estate investment opportunity. I went down there to learn how to kiteboard. And I went down there and there was no lodging. I couldn't find a place to stay. I ended up having to rent a place for more nights and more bedrooms than I needed. And there was zero cancellation and it just wasn't very friendly. Mm -hmm. And so that sparked my interest and said, this, this is not right. The world has evolved past this. I started to take a look at it and then I came to 10 different other macro and micro opportunities in that area. 
And that's what gave me the confidence. I started with one plot of land and then two and then three. And next thing you know, I've got 20 acres and I had to go raise a fund because the opportunity was so big that it justified taking that additional step of getting outside investors for the first time. So the entrepreneurial lens and the Airbnb investing in the short, like it's not necessarily prescribed. It's just the way that I view the world and you will find more opportunities the more you open your mind and the more you look for them. And that's really the lesson on all of the YouTube channels and all that. We talk about short-term rentals. We're going to put a lot of money in your pocket, but what you do with that money and what you do on a go forward basis in the rest of your life, that's up to you. And that's the really big opportunity, the big lesson, the big mentorship. Got it. Cool. So again, Richard, tell us how, what's, what's the best way to follow you or get in touch with you or, or check out all the things that you're doing to, to help mentor us into following kind of, you know, hanging on your coattail. Come check us out on the website, www.str.university. And then from there, uh, you'll be led to our YouTube channel, STR University. There's, I don't know, three, 400 videos and we yeah. produce at least three a week. So there's constantly new content. Um, and then come to our Facebook group and just ask whatever questions on your mind. You'll get a great answer. Cool. So when we come back, please stay tuned. When we come back, I'm going to, we're going to drill down some other areas. What I want to know is, is there a specific price point, you know, that's, that's, that you find that's good. Um, my fear of doing some of this would be, you know, the damages, you know, you go into a hotel and, you know, people just, they don't care. You know, they don't, I would be reluctant to rent out my house coming back and my couch is ripped, my TV's broke and things like that. So those are the things we're going to discuss in segment two. So I hope you, hope you love what you're listening or hearing today, guys. And don't go away. We'll be back. We will be back in two minutes. God bless. Welcome back to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. Today, our special guest, Richard, from STR University, short-term rentals. So if you've been listening, I hope uh, you got to follow this guy. He's amazing when it, it's even in my case, I'm sitting here talking with him and I see all his YouTube videos, but as I'm listening to him, things are popping in my head. It's like, you know what? I've lost, and I hate to say it this way, I've lost so much money in rental income or rental properties that I am very, very, very reluctant to do this again because it's like insanity. You can't, you know, you, you, you did it once and it didn't work, so you keep trying. But watching his videos and and talking with him and you know checking out a lot of his other information, uh, other data. I mean, a lot of this stuff makes complete sense. So welcome back, Richard. Thank you so much, Dan. So here's what I want to talk about now. We talked about location. Basically, you're getting us on our way to start doing this. So location, we described that. Is there a specific price point? You know, do you want to, how do we know, say, for example, you know, the price point in, it's going to be factored in on the rents that you can receive, but what's the best way to do research of that? Because if I buy a property in Chicago, downtown Chicago, a condo, Yes, I might be able to spend three, four, five hundred thousand and get my money back. But if I buy a you know little cottage in Wyoming or whatever, you know it might only be a hundred thousand because the rental cash flow isn't there. Absolutely. Okay. How do you make sure it's a good investment? Yes, sir. And what I would say is, with very few exceptions, this strategy seems to work worldwide. There are areas where um, there's a lot of competition, and the easiest way to check that out is just go to Airbnb and or VRBO and plug in that town or that community that you want to see. And if there's 7 million things that look exactly like yours, that's going to be a lot more challenging to stand out and differentiate yourself. And people probably start to compete on price at that point. But if you go there and there's just a dozen or two, and you know, for instance, in in Hatteras Island where I'm doing my development, there's 5 million visitors per year. And there are like eight listings. So I don't have to be a rocket science. There's a lot of room for error. I, I, 5 million people, eight Airbnbs. Now there are whole home rentals. There's a traditional uh, weekly rental. That's what's going on down there. So I'm being a little bit forward thinking and saying, well, I think some of those people probably don't want every Saturday to Saturday and bring their own linens. 
some of these people would like a four night stay and some of these people would even like the linen there. Yeah. So you just start to think about what's existing and that's your competitive base and then think about what you're offering and does that make sense? But I think that the price point question, I've seen this work from $17 a night where it's a, a shared room to I've had short-term rental listings that go for $4,000 a night or more. <laughs> so this works in across the entire spectrum. But of course, at $4,000, you have to offer a lot more amenity, service, location, hospitality than at $17 a night. So right. we teach people how to make sure that you're adding a ton of value and creating what we call raving fans who are leaving five-star reviews, that's the marketing engine for your business, right? You need that five-star review. You need to over-deliver value so that people write great reviews so that when people come and look at Airbnb and say, do I want to stay there? They look at all these great reviews and they're like, yeah, this is my spot. And here's the secret. The more of those five-star reviews you get, the more that you can charge. Right. Got that's it. it. All right, next question. I know I'm throwing curveballs at you. In your experience, and you, now you've done this for years, is there specific property types that work better than others? For example, a single-family home versus a condo versus a two-flat. I don't know if you don't understand what I mean by two-flat. Yeah, In sure. Chicago, it's two-flat, four-flat, three-flats, yep. whatever. You know, I guess what you were just saying, even rooms rent out well. But what, in your experience, what one kind of works the best, if any? So I would say that every single property type that I've seen works really well. Uh, the, the variable that I'm going to throw in here is one that you didn't mention, but the more experiential you can create, the more experience, the more unique, the more memories, the more you align with the right people. So let's say you're in horse country. If you can make your horse country really feel like you're in an equestrian center and people walk in and they're there for equestrian and they're at home and they're like, wow, this is my home away from home, you are much more likely to win than, say, a plain vanilla office type four white walls in the middle of somewhere. Like That's not particularly compelling. That's not very memorable. That's transactional as opposed to relationship-based. And so the things that I teach and I think are really important on a go forward basis to stand out from the crowd, doesn't matter whether you're in a shared room or a mansion, is to know who your audience is, know what they're coming for, make them feel at home, give them a rich experience that creates memories, and you won't have competition and you'll be able to charge whatever you ask. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, here's my reluctancy. You mentioned, you know, if I go on vacation or I go away or go visit somebody, go to a wedding, renting out my home. Yeah. Here's my, it's scary. So nobody tr was going to treat my home like I do. So, you know, w what are you seeing is between, you know, is damages, wear and tear on the properties? Are, is there a way to get insurances for that. So my concern would be, you know, somebody comes in there just for a night and they woo woo and they break stuff and, and sure. things like that. Are you seeing that or is there a way to protect yourself from those situations? I would say that your reluctance and self-limiting belief is what creates the opportunities for guys like me that have overcome that barrier, right? Okay. Like yeah. I had that too. So mm -hmm. we all start there, but some of us are taking action and making a lot of money. And some of us are just standing on the sidelines and letting the self-limiting belief limit our quality of life and our enjoyment. So that's the first thing you have to overcome that. And what I would tell you is on our Facebook group and in our YouTube channel, we help you screen the right guests. Got it. So you don't just have to take anybody that comes in. Anybody who wants to say your house. You don't just have to let them stay at your house. We teach you what questions to ask and in what order. And there's certain questions that you can't ask, but there are questions that you can get you know, around the edges and get the answers. So we try and screen for the right guest in advance of them coming and saying, we, we try and avoid the problem as opposed to deal with the problem. Now that said, you are correct. We can't really control how people behave in our home. We can try and get the right people in there and they can have a bad, you know, night or a bad episode. Uh, I would say that that is largely fear-based. And the reality is if you come look at our Facebook group with 12,500 hosts, there will be a couple of posts, but the vast majority of the 500 or more posts that we get on a given day 
are about growth and entrepreneurialism and how this is working and that so on. So I don't want to minimize it and say it doesn't exist, but I do want to say you probably have too strong a reaction or too much fear than justified. Gotcha. Uh, there is insurance that you can get for short-term rentals. Um, I've personally had one or two bad experiences in the six or eight properties I've managed over four or five years. Um, and it's like a business, you know, like you've had hiccups in your mortgage business and I've had hiccups in my, I have a ground transportation business. And, you know, when Uber came out, everyone was like, there's no way I'm going to ride in a stranger's car. There's no way I'm going to let my family ride in a stranger's car. Well, guess what? There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of rides happening every single day. So that barrier to entry, people have gotten over that. Yeah. And people are getting over the fact that I'm going to allow strangers into my home. Every single day, homes that weren't available on the market become available on the market because people are crossing over that barrier. And then they realize that they enjoy it. Hosting can be fun. You can make some really great friends and meet some great people from all over the world. You're getting paid to do it. You're starting to think about entrepreneurial op opportunities and you see the world in a different lens. And you can take that money and save it and invest it in the second property and the third and the fifth. So to get started uh, is really important and to overcome that fear. Come hang out with our group on Facebook. Come watch the YouTube channels. Get educated. Don't let fear um, limit your abilities. Do the diligence. Got it. That Thank you. I just I can't say thank you enough for coming back another day and teaching us this system. So, Richard, one more time. I, I want if if you haven't, everybody, please grab a paper and pencil. Write this down. I'm good. This will be on YouTube. It'll be on uh, I'll put it on Facebook, LinkedIn, a podcast will be on iTunes and Spotify, everything anywhere to help get the word out on how Richard can help you get into this Airbnb phenomenon and make a lot of money at it. So Richard Woods, one more time, let us know how to get a hold of you or follow you. Absolutely. Look, it's with my pleasure to be here and I appreciate everyone's time and energy. My purpose, my mission is to help people become entrepreneurs using the roof over their head because everything should pay for itself. And we break it all down for you via email on the str.university website. Start there. Give us your email address so we can stay in touch with you, tell you what's going on, meetups and other great things that we do for free. And then also check out our YouTube channel where we have hundreds of instructional videos, content on what to do, what not to do, how to do it. Um, and then join our Facebook community, Short Term Rental University. It's a free group on Facebook. Uh, we have 12,500 hosts. We have something like 500 posts a day and thousands of engagement activities every day. So people are just there. They're posting. This is a hobby. This is a community. This is friendship. And the best part is people are growing and stretching and becoming entrepreneurial and making money. Awesome, man. I'll, God bless you, brother. I hope continued success multiples. So, and I will be Thank reaching you. out to you because I'm going to get this started personally. Um, we talked off, off, you know, off the mic a little bit about some things I have going and I'd love to have your mentorship. So thank you again. And I want to thank all the listeners. If I hope you love the show, please track us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, iTunes, Spotify, every which way you can to find us and God bless. Have a great night. And thanks again, Richard. Take care. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Dan. All right, man. You've been listening to the mortgage update with Dan Frio. For over 10 years, Dan has been helping AM1160 listeners. With so many companies to choose from and hundreds of loan options, the mortgage process can be confusing and costly. Be sure to listen each day for Dan and learn the difference between FHA, VA, and conventional loans. You'll also learn how to negotiate lower interest rates and fees, as well as steps to buying your first home and whether refinancing makes sense. 